Hello, good morning. I'm reviewing uh, my Albert Garcia MGX2 wheel that I had purchased uh, a little bit a uh, while ago before the COVID um, lockdown ha happened. And um, as you can see, it's a nice little wheel. Um, it cost quite a few dollars. Uh, I got mine uh, fairly discounted at about $279 in Bass Pro. And I got another one from Harris Sports in England and I brought this wheel because it is among the lightest wheels that you can buy not the lightest but among the lightest wheels that you could buy and it has a very uh, slow retrieval rate of about 21 inches which I find I need for uh, bottom fishing that I do around Sheepshead Bay and the, um, this is mostly for people who fish hard like we do out in uh, Brooklyn and this wheel has been used to catch 60 70 fish a day you know easily for three days a week plus maybe you know through all kinds of weather on uh, out of the docks at a sheepshead bay and it's now three months old and uh, it in many ways even when you brought it you knew had to know that it was going to be uh, not um, even though it was expensive and top line it was uh, going to have troubles probably going through the amount of punishment that we put it through and uh, this wheel has suffered that kind of uh, uh, punishment mostly as you can see there is um, some grit and I'm not sure what you want to call this I wouldn't call it corrosion pitting maybe on the uh, body of the reel and the, functionally it hasn't had any problems uh, in fact it's been a gem but um, it's uh, going to be you know I've had to maintain it to the best I can, but uh, some aspects to it is just um, going to be what they are. I mean, that's what this is really about, to see, you know, if we take this $400 bait caster wheel, is it going to go through the kind of punishment that we would put it through on a typical day at Sheepshead Bay? You know, understand, you know, I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, we take the poles, we throw them to a cab, we take the cab, we put them on the boat, the boat guy goes through, he washes down the duck, I'm sure he has more than once or twice decided to throw salt water on the reel, you know, uh, why it's been in use uh, um, when in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the day, especially on Sunday mornings, and um, and you know, I've had to uh, maintain it. Now, my pen torques, I don't worry about this really. I mean, that's the reason why I brought them because they're solid and they're rock. Like nothing can really damage them. It really takes a lot of work to get them. These have had definitely problems in this area, as you can see as far as the pinning is concerned, but I'm going to uh, start to clean this and we'll um, not do a heavy clean of it, but just a normal maintenance of it at this particular junction. And um, we'll see how... So the first step is that we're going to put this into some salt water here. We're not in some salt water, into some fresh water. Fresh water, not salt water. And I'm putting it into the bucket and hopefully it'll sit there for, um, for about 10 minutes. This wheel has definitely been splashed with salt water on the docks from the mates that go through the uh, boat and clean, and they have no compunction about uh, splashing uh, with forceful water, uh, salt water onto uh, onto all of the uh, reels uh, that and rods that are on the bait uh, or on the uh, rod holders all along the boat in the middle of the afternoon, especially on Sundays. So that being said, that's the reality of. Of, of life on the, on the docks and so uh, we're going to put this into the fresh water and let this sit for about 10 minutes okay okay so now we've uh, I've taken this out I'm taking it out I've soaked it now just so that you should know generally it's as a rule you don't soak fishing reels like this you get a little spray bottle or something you just clean the outside and put a little water around it uh, fresh water you would normally uh, wash them down like this, but we put them through so much uh, uh, on the boats that uh, when it comes time to clean them, we will soak them through. This is not the recommended way, or the way the manufacturers suggest that you uh, deal with these uh, rods. What they want you to do is just slightly clean them on the outside with some water, just get the salt around, but by the time we get to it and get off the boat after seven or eight hours, then um, the salt's already encrusted into the into the gear mechanism, so you know it, it takes a little bit more 
to clean it out. And it's not just the wheel itself, but even the line itself gets uh, crusty. So that's the way that is. And uh, we can t t now we can take a look at it and see how it looks. You know, sh sh shake some whatever water out of it. It's easier to do with two hands, but I'm holding the camera. All right. And now, try to dry it off a little bit. And now, I'll start to disassemble this wheel a little bit according to the recommendations of the wheel. And what we can do is look at it this way. And you'll see here that there's this little knob right here. I'll show you. Right. And this knob right here is a problem and a, a blessing. It, what it does is it allows you to, to remove the entire spool from the operation. Right? Unfortunately, what's happened is, is that when they put these out, that there have been times when uh, this has been too loose and then this whole cap falls off and you're stuck uh, without a functioning reel. That's caused some anger among users of this type of reel. I don't know why they don't do something just to keep it on uh, so it doesn't fall off altogether. But in any event, uh, now it's a little bit harder for um, for it to, to come off. It doesn't just pop off so easily, at least not the ones that I've seen. So I imagine that was a correction that they made in the design of this. I'm going to put this down for a second and take this off. Okay, so you can see it here. This button is in the down position, and this will allow me to pull this off. Um, in fact, I already started pulling it off, so you'll see that there's a little space here. I'm going to uh, see if I can do this with one hand. I doubt it. Let's try it this way. I'm not going to do this. And it's a two-hand operation, which is good, actually, because you don't want this thing popping up by itself. Ah, here it comes. Okay, so. Now, it comes loose. And this here is the braking system, more or less. And this here is the spool. Nice little spool. And that's the centrifugal braking force that when this spins, it goes against here and causes uh, the braking action. That's necessary to prevent it from uh, tangling. Uh, it works. It works really good. This wheel, after thousands and thousands of casts, has never, never, never gotten tangled. And I have put it through hell uh, in, uh, in casting. So you've got to be pretty impressed with that the way it is. But that's the spool separated from the body of the uh, of the uh, of the wheel and as you can see this is pretty much easily designed or designed to get right at it and be able to do the day-to-day -day maintenance so that you don't destroy it okay now once we look at it we'll just see normally you put a little bit of grease right there in that spot on, on this piece on right there and a little bit of grease in the pen grease or quality grease onto the uh, onto the braking system and you put a little bit of grease in the spool socket for lack of a better term down there and that's all uh, after that you're pretty much set with type of day-to-day -day maintenance that this will have but we're just looking at it we can see that the insides look great, no problems. Uh, so, whatever cosmetic problems are to the outside, the inside uh, has is uh, is preserving itself quite nicely at this point. And just take a quick look at the uh, lever wind uh, here, or the worm screw. It looks also uh, good. So, um, now in a minute, in addition to this, there is uh, you can take using a screwdriver. You can take that screw out and that opens up this little hole that's here. There's a little hole there. It's, there it is, now you can see it. And uh, that pops off, not easy. When I first tried to do this, you don't want to break something when you first time you do something, so you're very gentle with it. But it's got a lot of, um, you know, uh, sticky force on there. It doesn't like to come off, uh, so you gotta, you know, jiggle it a little bit to pull that off, but in here, or in this part here is the main gear and all you do is put a little bit of grease in there when you open up the screw and that's it and it's greased um, and that's pretty much your normal maintenance you put a little bit of oil 
here and here. This is, of course, looks very good. No problems with it. You know, it really does look like all the problems with it are just cosmetic at this point. Um, which is, after uh, three months of really grinding on it, pretty good. So, here is where I'm looking at it and I'm thinking there's problems. Um, this is part of the, uh, the shell also over here. Take a picture of that. Yeah, in that shell, you can see some corrosion, some kind that I'll clean off. Uh, this is a contact point where with the uh, with the side door, and uh, that makes me worry a little bit because there is mechanisms involved here, including the worm screw is connected over here. So uh, I'll clean that off a little bit and see what's going on with that. All right. Okay, so after fiddling with this for a few moments, you can see the Q-tip that I used uh, is got a little darkness in it and grease. And here we have, um, I'm looking at it, and I did just with some water, I cleaned, uh, fresh water I cleaned, and some paper towels, you can see the paper towels over here. Uh, I just cleaned out that tip. This is obviously going to be a part of the wheel I'm going to have to keep oil to try to keep water out of this because um, you can see that there is corrosion that happens in there otherwise. I removed most of it. It looks pretty good right now. Can't complain. Um, but in the process of looking at that, by the way that's the, uh, the door knob right there. The, uh, we noticed also that down here on the lower part of the uh, body there is some type of hole here. There is not a screw there. There's never been a screw there. I'm pretty certain of it. I have three of these reels. I think they all have that hole. Um, but what makes me worry here is that there's definite corrosion. You can see it in that area. And I don't know what's causing that. And I don't know why it happens. And I don't know how normal that is to happen. But this uh, will not come off. Like, you know, the. Um, the, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, coating that's on the body of the, uh, of the wheel is, uh, is, is, is coming off on that area in corrosion or pitting. So, um, I'm not thrilled with that and there's not much I can do about it. This might just be a fact of life with this room, and I might just have to live with this. Um, I don't know what it affects. Obviously, that hole is there for a reason. Um, and maybe it's something I'm going to have to talk to the Apple Garcia people about and find out what that is and what's the story with that. Well, so I can take a picture of it. Okay, so looking at the inside, you see that all the functional areas there are pretty clean. Very good. Um, so, structurally, it seems sound enough. And it seems like everything's working. All it needs is a little bit, a couple of spots of oil. And I'll put this thing back together again. Okay. And. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, the oil. Um, I brought a high quality uh, bearing oil from uh, Smooth Drag. TSI, 321, etc., etc. You can see the label for yourself. And um, this is a, you know, a bearing oil. And uh, you should have grease and oil. Unfortunately, I don't have my grease bank. So we're just going to oil it and maybe I'll grease it when I get into the house. Maybe I'll snip that into the video at that point. But uh, there's just a few places for it to uh, get oil. Um, in here, in the knobs. Each knob gets a little bit of oil. A little oil in here, a little oil in that spot over there where I normally would put some grease. And that's pretty much it. Um, a little bit of oil goes onto the mechanism here, usually on the drag, and I'll do that. Um, and that's it. So this is actually, you know, very easy to, uh, to take care of, maintain. It's nothing. You know, especially since it all comes apart very nicely without any, uh, without any need for help. There is one other place. When you open up the, uh, the port here, um, with the screwdriver, which you can open this up and you put the um, 
a little bit of grease into the uh, main gear. And I'm, I'll do that maybe also in the house. So we're definitely going to have to cut a second part of this video at that point to put the grease in. Um, but for the time being, let's just uh, put, it, put the oil where we need it. So, put oil, drop. drop here, put a drop here, put a drop in here, right, put a drop in here, I'm going to just put a drop on here, since I don't have grease the time being, I'll put, put a little bearing oil on there, just to keep it uh, lubricated until I get back to the house. And I'm going to just put a little bit of oil in around this area. And that's it. That's all we got to do. Put it back together. Put it back together. Put that part in there. And put this piece back together. And here. And we'll flip the switch and we're all done. Everything. And the other place I'm going to put a little bit of oil is going to be on the worm screw over here. Now I'm going to see why these videos are so hard to make. Got to get a, a little bit of a tripod. Okay. That was too much oil, to be honest. But we'll just give it a, a whirl here. Okay, and it is sliding very smooth. And you can see how nicely it spins. Even with a minimal amount of effort, that's perfect. And you see the knobs are spinning again. And it really, it feels just like, uh, in my hands, it feels just like a new reel. Um, like it did when it came out of the box. I'm quite quite surprised. So despite the cosmetic problems, it seems to be working just fine Okay